We need some floofage. Yes. Floof me. We're talking about hair. Let's get some floof in there. Oh no, that was too much floof. Hey, I'm Stephanie and I'm coming to you today naked. Well, not really, obviously not really with a naked face because uh, my plans have all been thrown asunder today. I was originally going to come home, have a nice relaxing moment of zen, apply some makeup, contemplate what I was going to say in a video, hang out with you. And then my mom called and uh, we ended up talking for a long time. And ultimately what's more important, my makeup or my mom, my mom wins every time. So here I am coming to you with no idea except that we're gonna be talking about my panning for gold project update. Just in case you're new here, if this is your very first time clicking on my video, I'm so sorry that you chose a chaotic one to start with. They're not all like this, but um, panning for gold is my attempt at doing an extremely thoughtful and careful declutter of my makeup collection by pitting products that have similar claims head to head against each other and only keeping the gold nuggets of my collection. I try to use everything at least 10 times. Um, sometimes I have to use it more to really figure out my thoughts. But uh, basically, I come back with an update anytime I have discovered a gold nugget, and I have discovered a gold nugget, or two, actually, today. So we're going to be talking about those. The first product pair I have an update about is these little guys. They are dry texture creams for the hair, and I actually use them as dry shampoos in a pinch. Basically, the only time I use this is when I have to fly, I can only take a carry-on, and I know I'm going to need a dry shampoo. This serves that purpose in a pinch. It's not ideal. It's not the best product on the market to use as a dry shampoo, but it works in an emergency. So I pit the uh, Sandcastle Dry Texture cream from RN Co against this dry lift texture and volume paste from AG Hair Care. And I was hoping this one would win. <laughs> this was last year's champion. Um, I had pit this against another RN Co dry texture or dry shampoo paste, and this was the winner. Uh, and I was hoping that this one would win this time because I kind of liked the way it smelled better. This one smells lightly citrusy. It's not a very strong smell. Once I'm finished applying it, the smell totally dissipates, but I liked the smell of this one. This one just kind of doesn't smell like anything. Unless I inhale really hard, then, <laughs> I'm not sure how healthy that is, but then it smells very faintly of Windex. I mean, not, not the best smell for a hair product, but it is very faint. I had to really snort that <laughs> to like smell it. But, you know, just based on the smell, I wanted this one to win. Unfortunately, it did not. <laughs> this one worked better. I would apply um, both to my head at the same time, putting one on one half, one on the other, and seeing how it held up throughout the day. This one is just a little bit grittier. I really like a grittiness because I feel like it just adds more volume to my hair. It holds more of the roots upward to just give me more of that boost. Whereas this product was actually very nice. It did work. It's not that it didn't work at all. It was actually a very nice product, but it kind of smoothed out the texture of the hair a little bit. And um, it just didn't offer me as much volume. So this one, because it didn't give me as much volume, despite the fact that I like the smell better, this one's going to move along because I need this type of product so infrequently. I only need one. So I'm definitely going to be passing this one along and keeping the R&Co Sandcastle Dry Texture Cream. This little stinky gold nugget. The second product pair I have an update about is scalp exfoliators. I pit the salicylic acid exfoliating scalp treatment from the Inky List against this r &Co Submarine Water Activated Enzyme Exfoliating Shampoo. These two products both worked really well, but they were very different. So let's talk about that. This product is one that you put in your hair before you shower. So like 10 to 15 minutes before you take a shower, um, you simply part your hair, 
pour it onto the part and, you know, kind of do that repeatedly until you get your whole scalp. And then I would just kind of, you know, gently rub it in to make sure it was all spread. And I would let it sit for about 10, 15 minutes. And then I would hop in the shower, shower as normal, and it worked great. What's really nice about that is the consistency of this. This is like water. So when I put it into my hair, it simply it went on easily. <laughs> Not something you normally think about, you know, when you're talking about like applying a product, but like it was actually easy to get the product onto my scalp, like through the individual hairs onto the scalp, which is the actual thing I'm trying to exfoliate. And that's what I really liked about this one. The only disadvantage is that I would have to remember to do it 10 to 15 minutes before my shower, which wasn't always the case. And sometimes it would throw my schedule off a bit. But that wasn't tragic. It was just, you know, something to keep in mind. This product, on the other hand, is a little trickier. I mean, it's a shampoo. So you'd think, well, Stephanie, you shampoo your hair all the time, I hope. Um, and yes, I'm actually pretty good at using shampoo normally, but <laughs> apparently not when it's like this. This is a really thick paste. It's like you, you know, put the effort into squeezing it out onto your hand. And then all of a sudden you'd have this like fat caterpillar just sitting on your hand. And then you'd have to smush the shampoo caterpillar, but then you put it on your, your head. And I felt like I couldn't get it past my hair onto my scalp, but it's supposed to be exfoliating my scalp, not my hairs. So what I would have to do is like make sure that I got enough water in there to really like kind of, um, it felt like I was diluting the paste a bit to get it to, to be thin enough to go into in between the individual hairs. But I was always worried that I was diluting it too much. And the thing is, I would have to repeat this process over and over again. So I had to use a ton of product. Like, I don't normally go through shampoo very fast because I have very fine hair. And so I feel like it's pretty easy, generally speaking, for me to get shampoo onto my scalp. But that was not the case with this. This, like, I don't know, this this was just wanted to stay its own chunky caterpillar self and didn't want to spread out through my hair. Once I got it to do that, once I went through the effort of making sure that it was diluted enough and that I was really getting it into the, all of my scalp, then it worked wonderfully. And I did feel like the roots of my hair, like everything just looked a little bit shinier um, when I first dried my hair after getting out of the shower. And so I kind of liked that about this. So the question is, which one is the gold nugget? And I would have to say... This one is the gold nugget. <laughs> um, just because it was so much easier to use. Just pour, rub, wait, done. And it's just super simple. Um, however, I'm not just going to throw this away because I honestly, even though there's still a lot left in here, um, I think it's one more use. And this one's easier to travel with because it's so thick. It's not going to explode everywhere. Whereas this one's very watery. Uh, and so, you know, if it opens up, it's going to get all over everything. And so I think what I'm going to do is just pop this in my travel bag. And the next time I go on a trip, this is what I'll use. I'll use it up that once and then it will be gone. And, uh, I won't be repurchasing it just because it is a little bit harder to use, but I will stick with this one because, uh, it's just easy and I feel like it works. So now that we found some gold nuggets, the question is, what will be rolling in next? Well, I can tell you, it will not be another dry texture paste because I have tested all the ones that I had. So the reigning champion, this R&Co Sandcastle Dry Texture Cream, will be the unopposed champion and simply move into my travel bag and live there in peace. So I thought instead of uh, testing that, I would test straight up normal dry shampoos. I am trying to, at the moment, move away from the dry shampoos in the pressurized or aerosol um, spray bottles. Because they are pressurized, they're officially a fire hazard and you're not supposed to pack them in uh, checked luggage. And uh, I discovered that the hard way <laughs> when I was on tour. It was like, you know, we were going, going, going. There was no time to wash my hair for a couple of days. And we got to the venue after flying I opened my bag and there was a little note from the airport security and they just wrote, hi, we had to check your bag. And unfortunately, we had to remove a fire hazard. And under fire hazard, they wrote hairspray. Well, they didn't take my hairspray. They took my dry shampoo. And I had to like play a gig in front of I don't know how many thousand people with greasy, nasty hair. And uh, I never, ever want to do that again. <laughs> so... 
I am testing shampoos in these little poof bottles because these are travel friendly and I can put these in my checked luggage. <laughs> um, I know this one from Brio Gio pretty well. It's the Scalp Revival Charcoal and Biotin Dry Shampoo. I actually really like this one. The only thing I'm not crazy about is the delivery method. These poof bottles, they're just they're just not as efficient as a spray bottle where you just part your hair, spray it, and you're done. Um, these take a little bit more finessing, but not as much as this. So I do have to say this is a step up. <laughs> Um, this is my current favorite in this form. And so I thought I would test it against this one um, from Rahua. Rahua? Rahua? I, I don't know how to pronounce this. Maybe you do. If you do, feel free to let me know in the comments. It is the Voluminous Dry Shampoo. I'm going to be testing these out. I'll see which one's better and see if this one can beat the current champion. And uh, I'll get back to you on that. And the last contestants getting rolled in on this edition of Panning for Gold are these two things from Orbe. This is the Maximista Thickening Spray, and this is the Volumista Mist for Volume. Thickening Spray, Volume. For me, that's kind of the same thing. And I'm wondering, are these different? To be honest, I have this by accident. Um, I was traveling and wanted to pick up one of these because this is what I had been using. And uh, I accidentally got this. <laughs> <laughs> but to be fair, the descriptions are the same, and I just thought maybe they changed the bottle, but no, they're they're different products. Um, so let's just look at the website. I'm going to take a quick look and see what the difference is. Let's look at some of these keywords. This one takes your hair higher because it's a main plumping spray. This one, according to the website, uh, it lets your locks live life to the fullest. I didn't even know that my locks were trying to live life at all, but okay. Instantly imparting body and lift. So this one lifts and this one takes your hair higher. I don't know. I'm confused. Do they work the same? Is it the same juice in a different bottle? Uh, do they work better together? These are the questions that I will be asking myself, and I will be testing them, and uh, hopefully we'll all find out the answers. If you happen to know the answer already, please do tell, because I, I'm curious. I will be sharing some thoughts on makeup products in my next Panning for Gold update, so if that sounds interesting, or if you'd like to hear what the results are for these products, make sure you're subscribed. Feel free to throw me a thumbs up for encouragement, since I'm probably gonna need it, trying to figure this stuff out. And other than that, Thanks so much for hanging out for this very chaotic feeling uh, version of Penning for Gold. <laughs> it was very fun having you here. I hope you have a great week. And I hope that we can all remember that even stumbling can be a form of moving forward. So let's stumble in style. Mm -hmm.